Today I'm going to show you how to make this fabulous card catalogue unit and I've given you the option of either having fixed drawers as I've got here or opening drawers. The cutting list is in the description box below and coming up next is a list of all the tools and materials you'll need. Then we'll get started. Okay, so we're going to begin by attaching the mouldings to the side pieces. So put one piece to one side for now and then turn that piece lengthways and you're going to make a pencil mark along the centre of that long edge. Now it's 55.5 millimetres so just round that down or up to the nearest whole number. Turn it back like that and draw a line to join the two. And then when you do that, just go on to the side of the wood. And that's the little line that we're going to use um, to place the central moulding. Do the same on the other piece. OK, so take one of the mouldings and you'll have six pieces like this. apply glue and I've got my glue again on a piece of card and a cocktail stick to apply it and then place that first piece straight along the top so that you've got a nice flush edge along the top there you can use one of the other pieces just to make sure it's lined up and you can put a piece across the bottom Have a spare cocktail stick handy just in case you need to remove any excess glue and I remove as much as I can at this stage but because I'm going to be staining the piece I shall sand at the end as well paying particular attention along any of these sort of glued joins and then this piece we want to place across the middle now I'm going to do that by eye just making sure that the centre of this moulding is over the top of that pencil mark but if you want to make a little mark in the centre of that moulding if you're not very good at sort of judging by eye then you can do that now make sure it's in the same place at the other side and before the glue is set you can always just bring your smaller rule in and just make sure you've got equal amount at the top and bottom and at each side and that should be around 20 millimetres three quarters of an inch once again remove the excess glue holding that piece into place as you do so and then I'm going to secure this um, with clothes pegs clothes pins one at each side as well that piece can then be left to dry and then repeat that process with the remaining side piece. We're going to do the same thing again with the back piece and this time you want to make the pencil mark along the short edge of the piece and however you rounded whether it was up or down make sure you do the same thing with this piece that way your mouldings will all line up once it's all fitted together join the line and just continue it onto the edge of the wood I always like to check for the neatest edge of the moulding before I glue it into place so that the neatest edge is always facing. If you've got a little bit of a, a dent or a scrape in the wood then glue that piece down so that the facing edge is always the neatest. Make 
so we've got a nice flush edge along the top this piece I'm going to bring in my spare piece of 5x5 five five strip and just press it all up towards the strip remove the excess glue Another horizontal mould in along the bottom there. Again, so you've got a nice flush edge. And then we're going to do the same thing again with that across the centre, using that line to centralise it. And if you need to put a little mark on there, then you can do that now. Make sure it's in the same place at both ends. I'm just going to use my smaller rule again just to check. Oops, I needed to come down a little bit that end. Again, I'm going to use clothes pegs to secure this into place and that's always important because as the glue dries the wood tends to curl upwards and you'll have a lot of gap in. And I think I'll just pop a couple in the middle there as well. And once again that piece can be left to dry. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove your um, clamps or clothes pegs and then just very gently sand along each side so that you've got a nice flush edge. And to do that, just go along the sandpaper in one direction. Don't sweep it back and forth or you'll round off the corners. And I've already done these two pieces. And then we're going to attach a leg to each side so that the top of each piece is flush. And I've got a couple of pair, spare pieces of strip here that I'm going to use to push the legs up against the side. So make sure you don't confuse those for the legs. Put those over there. And then apply glue along each edge. Pop that back down on your surface. And then attach the legs so you've got a nice flush edge along the top there. that into place, remaining leg as well, and then bring in those spare pieces of strip and just press the whole thing together, making sure it's flat against your work surface. Give it a good squeeze. And I just find that using the spare strips, you're sort of adding that pressure evenly all the way along. And then while you're holding it in place, you can use your spare cocktail stick just to remove the excess glue. Very important if you're going to be staining the piece. As wood dye and varnish won't take over glue residue. And then without picking that up, just sort of slide it along your work surface and that can be left to dry. And then repeat with the remaining side. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, take your back piece and just sand along each side just to make sure that you've got a nice flush edge and none of these mouldings are overhanging. And to do that, just hold it against your sandpaper and sweep it across. And you just want to go in the one direction, otherwise you'll round off the corners. Do that on both sides. Like that. And then place your back piece moulding side down on your work surface. And we're now going to make pencil marks for the draw divides. And we're actually just going to go down the piece 
Normally I would draw lines across for the shelves, but because we've got four divides across there, our shelf is going to line up nicely, just naturally underneath those, so we're not going to be making lines for the shelf pieces, just the divides. So starting from what will be your left hand edge, I'll give you the measurements in millimetres first and then in inches. So 12 millimetres. And you need a really nice sharp pencil for this, otherwise the divides will be off and we'll have different sized drawers. So 12 millimetres for your first mark. 25.5. 39. And 52.5. So just do a little pencil mark at each of those measurements across the top edge there. And in inches... That is 15 30 seconds of an inch, 1 inch, 1 and 17 30 seconds, and 2 and 1 16th. So do those marks again along the bottom edge. 12 millimetres, 25.5 millimetres, 39 millimetres, and 52.5 millimetres. 15 30 seconds of an inch, 1 inch, 1 and 17 30 seconds, 2 and 1 16th. Okay, and then turn that around, put the rule just below the pencil mark, and join that up. Next, take two of your five pieces. You've got the top, bottom and the three shells, all the same size. You want two of those. And we're just going to repeat these measurements on one side of each of those pieces. 12 millimetres, 25.5, 39, 52.5. Do that at the top and bottom of the piece. So 15 30 seconds, 1 inch, 1 and 17 30 seconds, and 2 and 1 16th. And again, turn and join those up and repeat those on the remaining piece. Okay, we're now going to begin construction. So bring in one of your side pieces and we're going to begin by attaching the back piece to the front of that what will become the back leg or the right hand leg there. And I'll just glue this into place and then I'll show you what it should look like when you've glued it. So I'm just sitting it along that join between the side piece and the leg. Press that into place. Have your spare cocktail stick handy just to remove any excess glue. And on the back edge as well. So just showing you there the overhang at the back of the leg. So your back piece is sat towards the front edge of that back leg. Just giving you that nice little lip at the back, the same as we've got at the side here. So pop the piece down on its side and we're now going to attach the top piece on the inside edge of the joined pieces like that. And you want to make sure that the first pencil mark you did, the 12 millimetres, is at the left hand edge. And just make sure that your pencil lines line up because we've got a thicker gap at this end because our divide will be sitting on the inside of this line. So just make sure your pencil lines are lining up. And then apply glue to the long edge and the short edge. And then put that 
into place so that it's sitting right at the top edge of that side and you can just feel along with your finger to make sure and then bring in your back piece to meet it and that will square the whole thing up make sure it's pushed right into that corner no gap in push the corner up if you need to otherwise that top piece will sort of drop down slightly and once you're happy it's in the right place you can press it all together hold it for a second while the glue begins to take So you should have a nice flat top piece there. Remove that excess glue. And then I just want to leave that to dry off just for a moment. And then we're going to be turning it upside down to attach our draw divides. Okay, so once that's dried off a little bit, you can lay it down. And I'm just using a spare piece of 1.5mm sheet here just to prop that side up so that you've got a sort of straighter surface to work on. And we're going to begin attaching the divides. And they're each going to sit to the right of this pencil line. So apply glue to one long and one short edge. And I advise in the cutting list to cut these pieces so that the grain runs in the direction of the shortest edge. Normally as a standard rule we'd cut the grain in the direction of the longer edge but just because the shorter edge of these is facing forwards and it's always a neater edge that's why I've advised you to cut them that way round. So I'm just lining this up. Sorry that that's in the way there but I'll turn it around and show you once it's sort of in position. Press it into place, make sure that the corner is right in along that top edge. I'm actually just going to use my cocktail stick just to pull that over a little bit so it's right along that pencil line. That way all the drawers will be nice and square. So if you can see there, I've attached it just to the right of that pencil line and so that I can just see that pencil line on the left hand side there. So carry, a lot, carry on with the divides along that top edge first, getting rid of the excess glue as well. Okay, so I'm now going to leave that piece to dry just for a moment and then we'll attach the first shelf. So now apply glue along the bottom of each of those divides and then keeping your marked up piece which is the bottom piece to one side bring in your shelf piece and that's going to go across there so apply glue to one short and one long edge and then attach that so it's sort of butted right up against those divides and so that it's sitting right into the corner again. Press it against the bottom of each divide. And then you can either do it by eye or you can actually bring in your ruler and just make sure that your divides are sitting completely straight. So if they've sort of moved over along the bottom edge, then put it straight again. And you can just bring in your little ruler to measure that. So you should have the same distance at the top and the bottom of each drawer. And if you find that you've got more or less at one edge, then move the bottom part of the divide so that it's straight. Sort of just jiggle it into position and then press the edges together. And there's our first row of drawers. And now we're going to continue and we just want to make sure now that we can line it up on the right hand side of that line 
on the back piece but then you want it to be sitting exactly below the one above so we're always going to be using the one above as our measurement to make sure that you're following that line downwards and that's how we'll proceed to the bottom of the unit. Okay, so I'm almost to the bottom of the unit now, and I just want to point out um, at this stage that it's important that you keep measuring as you go down and I've just found this if any of these divides are slightly over the 12 millimeters or the 15 30 seconds of an inch then it's going to throw the piece out so when you get to the bottom you'll find that either the divides overhang or you haven't quite got the 1.5 millimeter gap left for your bottom shelf so sort of keep measuring so to this stage here you should be 12 millimetres plus 3 millimetres, so you should be at 15 millimetres here. So once you sort of put this divide in place in this shelf, just measure that from the top to the bottom of this shelf is 15 millimetres. If it's a little bit over, by quarter or half a millimetre, you can deduct the size of the next divide. So you can just shave a little bit off the bottom of each of those next four divides. In fact, it might even be a good idea if you just cut your first um, four divides and then sort of get to this stage where you've put this set, this first shelf piece in, then cut your next four accordingly, deduct in a little bit if you need to. And then when you get to here, measure again, and that should be 12 plus 12 plus your three 1.5s. So what's that? 28 and a half. And again, if it's over, you can deduct a little bit from the next divide and so on and so on and keep working your way down like that. And I've just had that with these. I, I just sort of remember to check when I got to here. So I've just had to deduct a little bit off of the bottom divide, but it's it's half a mil if that. So it's not going to notice in the overall appearance, but then I'll be able to fit the divides in the bottom shelf in um, without sort of having anything overhanging at the bottom. So that's worthwhile doing. And also, um, the thickness of the wood, though it's 1.5, sometimes it can be just a fraction over. There's always a little bit of tolerance in these thicknesses, or it may even be a little bit thinner, but you can still adjust that by adjusting the size of the um, divide as you work your way down. Okay, so I can now put the remaining four divides into place. Once the bottom piece is in place, you can apply glue along all the exposed edges. And then attach your remaining side piece. So make sure you've got a nice flush edge along the top there. And along this front leg as well. So just gently manoeuvre that into position, press that together and then I've got some masking tape here already cut. I'm going to put over the side there, pull it nice and tightly and I'll just put a few pieces straight over like that as well. be left to dry. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove your masking tape and then you can sand the piece face down on your worktop. Just go around in circular motions like that and that just makes sure you've got a nice flush front edge. Okay, we're now going to prepare the top piece to attach. So we're going to bevel one long edge and both short edges. So to do that, have your sandpaper on your worktop, hold the piece at a 45 degree angle and sweep it towards you. 
you can see there that's just starting to bevel but we want a nice sort of sharp bevel so keep checking it and keep going if you need to until you've got a nice even bevel along there same at the other side and then along the front edge like that I then just like to tidy that up by hand just using a fine sandpaper to attach the top apply glue to the top of the unit make sure you get it right along the edges and onto those top of the legs and then we're going to attach the top so that the flat edge along the back is level with the back of these legs and that you've got an even overhang at each side and that's normally the thickness of your bevel so get it into place and then you can maneuver it so that it's sitting centrally across your unit press that down again remember to remove your excess glue Then I've got some masking tape here. I'm going to put a couple of pieces right over the top, pull it nice and tightly, I just want to put a couple of smaller pieces down the back edge there and it's always important to secure tops to units in this way otherwise the wood sort of tries to curl upwards and you'll have gapping and then I've got some clamps here as well I'm just going to put those across the top like that I'll put one at each end and one in the middle there as well and that can now be left to dry with this project, just because there are so many drawers, I've given the option of either making a working drawer, so an opening drawer, or a fixed drawer. So, as always, I've given the measurements in the cutting list um, for both working and fixed drawers, but they are just to be used as a guide. So the best thing to do is construct the unit first and then measure each opening and adjust the sizes accordingly and you just need to measure height width and depth and then I always deduct half a millimeter if that from each of those measurements for each piece and that just means the drawer will slide in and out easily and then we'll talk about the fixed drawer fronts in a moment um, but the same would apply construct your unit first and then cut the pieces for the fixed drawer fronts but if you are going to go for the removable or opening drawer and I would advise you to do that if you have the time it's always nice to have an authentic piece of furniture especially if it's going into a doll's house that's going to sort of be in the family for many years to come but if you really don't have the time then the fixed um, drawer option is for you and I'm actually going to be doing the fixed drawers myself but let's start with the removable drawer so once you've um, constructed the unit measure um, each opening and then cut your parts and I would advise do one drawer at a time because if you do them all you're just going to have parts everywhere and it could all be all become very confusing okay so to construct the drawer begin by applying glue along each side of the base piece and as these pieces are quite small and fiddly, you can use tweezers to handle them, if that would help. Put that piece back down and attach the sides. And you want a nice flush edge along the front and back, so make sure they're all lined up. I'm going to grab those strips of 5x5, um, five five, just to push those together. Again, comes in handy when you're sort of working on a smaller drawer. You can't actually get your fingers in there to press it all together. 
So press those together, make sure the sides are standing upright. Just push it along a little bit, make sure it isn't stuck to your worktop. And then just leave that to dry off for a moment. Once that's dried off enough so you can handle it without it falling apart, apply glue along the front and back edges. Don't worry if your side pieces are sort of falling inwards as mine are a little bit because we can straighten those up when we attach the final pieces. Pop that back down and then just push the front and back pieces into place and bring in those sides up so that you've got a nice square piece there. Same there like that. And sort of squeeze it all together. That piece can then be left to dry and you can move on to measuring your next opening. But if you want to sort of think about your drawers as being one, two, three, four, five and so on, going from left to right. And then you could even just put the little um, number in pencil, either on the inside or on the bottom, just so they don't all get muddled up. So if you're going for the fixed drawer method, Again, just use the measurement in the cutting list as a guide, but begin by measuring just outside oops, of the opening. The fixed drawer will need to overlap onto these divides, but only by a tiny bit, because don't forget each of these divides needs to have two drawers overlapping on it, and that's at the sides and at the top and bottom. So don't take up too much of that space with your first drawer front as you won't have anything for this second drawer front then to overlap onto. So begin by measuring, you want the opening and then you want to go half a millimetre, if that, above and below that opening. And then cut your piece of 0.8 millimetre sheet accordingly. If I just hold that on there, you'll see what I mean. So that just overlaps very, very slightly at the top and bottom of that opening. And I would overlap it very slightly onto the left hand leg. And then I'm just going to pop it down a little bit. And I'm going to make a pencil mark just overlapping onto that first divide. And then that is the width of my um, first draw. So I've got the height, measured the height first, so I've got a whole strip to do that top row. And then take the measurement of where you did your little pencil mark to. That's 12.5 in my case. Copy that onto the bottom and then you can cut, make your cut. And so it's still um, a time con time consuming um, process but this is going to be so much quicker than actually making the opening drawers and you want the grain of your drawer fronts running from left to right not top to bottom so then just lay that on there make sure you're happy with the fit like that and once you are Hold it in your hand, take a piece of fine grade sandpaper and just very gently bevel off each side. And that will just look better than a, um, just a square draw. So if you're doing your fixed drawers, they'll sort of sit inside the opening. When you're having a draw front that sits outside of the opening, it's nice to bevel the edges and it just gives a nicer finish. Get a nice even bevel all the way around. And then you can actually glue this into place before you move on to your next one. And to do that, you just want to apply a little tiny bit of glue all around that edge, around the outside edge of the opening. And I'm only using a little bit because I don't want there to be any um, or too much residue. Once I come to um, apply the wood dye. Done. 
in there as well. So I'm just letting it take it off the edge of the cocktail stick. Like that. And then lay the draw front on so that it's overlapping evenly all the way around. And you can use a spare cocktail stick to sort of help you manoeuvre it into place. You want it to be straight with the divide underneath and along the side there. I'm just going to push that over a tiny bit just so I've got a bit here for my next draw front. Whenever I do sort of like a fixed draw, which I don't do very often to be honest, I do like um, doors and drawers always to be opening or working, I always feel like I'm cheating a little bit. But just for the purposes of this project, just because there are so many draws to make, um, that's why I'm doing it this way. Let me know what you think. Do you feel like you're cheating if you're doing a fixed draw? And I think this gives a really nice look. And unless anybody actually tried to open them, I don't think you would be able to tell. So once that one's in place, you can then move on to your next one. Never just go um, make it the same size as your first one. Always measure, as with your sort of removable drawers, you're always measuring each opening. Because they could just be slightly different depending on where you've placed um, that divide. So then copy your measurement again. And it is slightly different that time by almost sort of half a millimetre. And then cut your second one and bevel the edges again. And just so just work your way along. Once you've fitted your draw fronts or made your um, removable drawers, the piece is now ready to apply wood dye or varnish or paint, whatever um, finish you're going to use. Prepare the piece by sanding all over and then I also sanded um, between the draw fronts just to get rid of any excess glue um, that might still be in there even though I was sort of careful to remove it as I went along with a cocktail stick. So I'm going to be applying a coat of dark oak over light oak wood dye to give me that nice sort of in-between colour. I shook the wood dye really well and then I've just dispensed a little bit into this glass um, jar just so I don't have to keep dipping the brush in and out of the tin. And I've got several pieces of kitchen towel here handy to wipe off the first coat of wood dye. So my unit has now had three coats of the wood dye and I applied a third coat just because there was still some glue um, showing so I had to sand it back and then I applied another coat and there's still a little bit of glue residue showing here and there but I actually quite like it because it makes it look like a sort of old worn unit. So the next job is to make the pull handles and I'm just going to move you in a little bit closer to do that. Okay so for the pulls you'll need a piece of brass sheet and this is a 0.002 millimeter thick sheet and it's probably just a bit thicker than sort of normal tin foil or aluminium foil and I've got some of this on order so if you don't have um, anything like this in your collection, then do go over and have a look at my Etsy shop and you'll find some in there and it's sold in sheets. And you'll also need a stylus tool, which is a tool with a ball on the end. And that's for shaping the handles. 
you'll need your scribe or a um, tool with a pointed end and that's for making the little nail holes and then you'll just need a normal standard um, desk punch. So we're going to begin by removing the bottom of the punch and we're just going to punch out some holes and I normally just use the one side of the punch to do that it's more controllable that way and just check that you're sort of next to it and not covering the hole but obviously you want to try and get as much out of your sheet as you can oops gone over the edge on that one and we need 20 draw pulls so you'll need 10 of these so take each little hole punch and just flatten it out with your finger as much as you can like that and then take your scissors and you want to cut each one in half now if you've used a desk punch like I have you'll probably find that you've got a little line across the centre where the sort of punch has gone through so you can just cut it along there but if you're using a sort of proper circle punch then just do it by eye rather than um, measuring and I'm just going to actually grab my tweezers and you might find it's easier to hold one side with your tweezers while you cut Okay, so I've just moved you onto a sort of cleanish area of my cutting mat for the next part, and we're going to score um, some little holes around each of the handles to act as nail holes. Now, you might find it useful to have a cocktail stick to actually hold the piece of brass with whilst you do it, and you don't want to do too many. I'm going to do probably about six, so just start that sort of bottom edge. I'm not pressing too hard either. There. Let me see if I can show you that close up. So you just want to work your way around the arch of the handle as close to the top as you can. And now another 19 to do. So once you've done that part, if you imagine the little holes you've just scored in there is the front of your handle, turn it over and bring in your stylus tool and we just sort of want to work on that little area below the holes we've made. So with your stylus just go along below the holes, making like a little arc and then just go across and hollow that out and this is sort of making the pull part of the handle just so it doesn't look like um, just a flat um, half circle on there okay so work round and you'll see the sort of outer edge starting to raise up and then turn that back over and then you just want to go along and flatten along where you've made the holes and that's the part at the back that will be sticking to the drawer so that needs to be nice and flat and what you'll have is something that looks like a little Cornish pasty there and again repeat with the rest of your handles So the brass pulls are now ready to attach to the unit and rather than making a measurement on each of the drawers I'm going to use a piece of tape as a guide. So take a piece of low tack masking tape and measure, so actually I'll use my smaller rule, 
measure so you've got a three millimeter or one eighth of an inch strip use your craft knife just to cut that and then peel that off and bring in your unit and you can just lay that along the bottom of that top row of drawers so the bottom of the tape is running along the bottom of each drawer like that and then just very lightly stick that into place and then bring in your pencil and rule again and then we're going to make a pencil mark in the centre of each drawer but onto the masking tape so just make a little pencil line at the centre of each and we can then just use that as a guide when we're placing the draw pulls. And this is quite a useful technique to know if you're sort of making um, pencil marks onto dark wood where they won't really be visible. Like that. And then once again, I'm going to use my tweezers to get hold of the actual handle. And I'm using my um, Gorilla Wood glue for this. So just use your cocktail stick to apply glue at the back of the little holes that you made. And I just want to stick it just above that line. And using that little central pencil mark as a guide. In the centre of the drawer there. So get it into place and then you can bring in a spare cocktail stick and just work it around the little holes, pressing that edge down. Press it into place and just hold it for a moment till the glue begins to take. And then just continue to work your way along that top row of drawers. Once you've attached the handles along that top row, just leave that piece of tape in place just until the handles are completely dry. And then just use another piece of tape and start again on the next row of drawers. And I like to leave the tape there until the glue is dry, just in case any of them are slightly overlapping the tape. When you remove it, you'll just pull them off. So once you've attached all of your handles and allowed enough time for the glue to dry, you can remove your masking tape. And then for the little draw labels, I'm using a font called Times New Roman, and this is size five. So leave all of your letters on the one sheet rather than cutting them out first. And then I want them to look quite old, so I'm going to age them up by soaking them in tea and you've probably seen me use this method before so just um, pour hot water on a tea bag let it cool down and then you could just lay the paper in there make sure it's fully submerged and that's really all it all it needs you don't need to leave it in there for too long Let the excess tea drip off and then that can be left to dry. Okay, so my sheet of letters has now dried off and that's all lovely and crispy and brown. So I'm going to use my craft knife and rule to cut those out. my letters into strips and now I'm cutting out the individual letters 
and as we've got 20 drawers and obviously 26 letters you'll need to put some of them onto um, sort of two or three so they're less sort of popular letters like I've done XYZ, I've done UV and a couple of the others I think um, H and I I've done as pairs just to cut it down to the 20 and then I want all of the um, pieces of paper to be the same size so I'm cutting the single letters to the same width as the XYZ index card just so that all of the labels look uniform once they're on the drawers Once you've cut all of your letters out you can just go ahead and stick them to the drawers and I'm just going to use the handle as a guide and just sort of stick it centrally a couple of millimetres above the handle. I'm just going to use a spare cocktail stick just to manoeuvre that into place. And there is the completed unit. And I'm really pleased with that. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you're going to give this one a go, do let me know. And if you're not a, already a member of my Facebook group, Little Bits and Pieces by You, then pop over and join. And if you do have a go at making this, then you can share photographs with the other group members. And if you enjoy making dolls house miniatures and furniture, you might like my books. I've published four of them so far, and they're all available to purchase from Amazon. Just search for Julie Warren and you'll find them. And for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.